Hello everyone, my name is uh, Dr. Amar Yunus and uh, today I want to talk about uh, C-Law exam, Special Equivalency Examination, which is uh, now conducted by Higher Education Commission for foreign law graduates. Uh, previously it was conducted by Pakistan Bar Council, now it is conducted by Higher Education Commission, I would say with the collaboration of Pakistan Bar Council. And uh, the purpose of making this video is that I myself is a foreign law graduate. And this year when I came back to Pakistan in August, I decided to take this exam. And when I started uh, looking for the preparation material, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything on internet. Uh, there were some notes available, but uh, I couldn't I couldn't find any proper guidance related to C law examination. As we all know that there is another exam which is called as uh, law GAT, law graduate assessment test. Uh, this exam is for local law graduates, those who have uh, passed uh, the local LLB program. And then there is uh, the C law examination, special equivalency examination, which is for Pakistani national who have uh, graduated from foreign universities. Or uh, in Pakistan, we have a uh, lot many institutions which are offering uh, external programs of University of London. They also have to take the C law examination. Uh, the procedure to get uh, license to practice in Pakistan for foreign law graduates is uh, I would say not very difficult but uh, a little bit complicated because first they have to take this C law examination and then they have to pass this law GAT examination uh, but if you have an LLM degree then uh, you are exempted from taking this law GAT but uh, still you have to take this C law examination so the C law examination is very important if you want to practice in Pakistan if we talk about uh, the syllabus of this exam, there are five subjects. Uh, the first one is uh, Code of Civil Procedure, Code of Criminal Procedure. Then there is uh, kanun e shahadat or Law of Evidence. Then there is the Specific Relief Act. And finally, there is Constitution of Pakistan. So you have to uh, prepare these five acts and uh, laws, ordinances, in order to, you know, appear in C law exam. So today I will share my strategy, how I managed to study these subjects and how I passed this exam. So first of all, what I did, I simply downloaded these five uh, laws, uh, or you can say the bear acts, I downloaded them and I started reading them uh, on my comp computer screen. But uh, uh, it was uh, quite difficult for me to study uh, on my computer. So what I did, I uh, printed myself uh, Kanune Shahadat, Specific Relief and Constitution of Pakistan. I uh, printed them and then I bought uh, two bare acts which is uh, code of civil procedure and uh, code of criminal procedure so if i may show you that this is the uh, code of criminal procedure and uh, this one is code of uh, civil procedure so there are a number of publishers who have published this uh, these books uh, you call them bare acts you can buy them from any uh, any bookstore any law bookstore so I bought uh, these two books because uh, they are quite lengthy. It was uh, difficult for me to, you know, read them online. So I started preparation of my C law by reading peer acts. So it is not very difficult. Many people say in Pakistan when I was uh, discussing uh, how to prepare the C law 
uh, with my local lawyers they were saying that it is very difficult to study the Bayer Act but I would say it was not very difficult for me as a foreign law graduate uh, I think that foreign law graduates are in an advantageous position to study from uh, these Bayer Acts because uh, the University of London external program or if you go abroad and uh, start your uh, law study in any law school they focus uh, a lot on substantive part of law but unfortunately in Pakistan the main focus is on procedural law so many local lawyers find it difficult when it comes to do the legal reading I'm not saying I'm not generalizing but in majority of the cases you might have observed that uh, uh, the reading skills are not very much developed in the uh, local law graduates as compared to the foreign law graduates even I have been told by uh, some of my friends that uh, there are different lists available lists of uh, questions and you can prepare these 10 or 15 questions and then uh, a night before the exam you just have to read these these 10 questions and the next day these 10 questions will be in exam and you have to attempt uh, the five questions means that these questions have been repeated throughout the last 10 or 20 years in the in, in the local LLB exams and everyone knows that which exams will, which uh, questions will come in the exam uh, so uh, the point which I'm trying to make is that the LLB study in Pakistan is uh, very selective and that's why many local law graduates uh, are unable to develop their uh, reading skills but uh, there are very good law schools as well in Pakistan which are uh, you know producing uh, a number of good lawyers I have been interacting with some graduates from uh, LUMS from um, uh, Punjab Law College, Qaeda Azam Law College, in, uh, Islamic International University, Islamabad graduates they are, they are very good when it comes to the substantive knowledge of law so I am not generalizing but I am just giving you some hope that uh, uh, when it comes to the preparation of C law, the foreign law graduates are at an advantageous position because they have been trained to study from uh, the Bayer Acts. So I downloaded these Bayer Acts and I started reading. I started from uh, the simplest one, which I felt is uh, Kanun e Shahadat or uh, Law of uh, Evidence and uh, then i read uh, specific relief act then i studied uh, constitution and finally i studied uh, uh, civil procedure first and then criminal procedure first civil procedure first because it was uh, in line what i was studying in kanun e shahadat or uh, specific relief uh, because uh, criminal law is is not not uh, into the loop or doesn't fall into the domain or not spread its tentacle that much on other laws other four laws as much you know the civil procedures uh, threads its uh, you know tentacles on uh, the specific relief or kanun shahadar or constitution but you can you can you can start by by any of these ideas that you have to read from the peer acts so after reading the peer acts, uh, uh, I started rereading these acts, and this time I was taking notes. So how I was taking notes, if I may share, I would like to show some of my, uh, you know, notes which I prepared during uh, during the preparation. Uh, if I can show you. Some of my notes. Yes, this one. So what I was doing, I was reading the act, and after reading this, I would take these types of uh, notes. For example, uh, uh, the, the first one is the Kanuni Shahadat. So uh, there are some important articles in this in this uh, uh, law, and the, the most, most important thing is that, that you have to memorize, memorize that this law was 
passed and when it was enacted or came into force. So usually this information is given in the, the beginning of uh, any, any act which you will study. And then, then the second information which is important is that how many articles, parts, or chapters, or sections are there. And you can see that this is about Kalamesh uh, Hadadat. Uh, I have written that when it was passed and when it was enacted. And how many articles, parts, and chapters are there. And then I would write the most important articles. For example, Article 5, which is about communication during marriage. Uh, then in Article 38, the confession to the police officer is not to be proved. Mainly, if someone will give a confession in police custody, it is not admissible in the court. Then the dying confession, Article 39 is talking about opinion of experts. Then an estoppel and burden of proof, legitimacy of child. Actually, this was the best question which came in my exam. So, so the point, point is that, that if you memorize uh, how many articles, parts, and chapters are there, you look into the text clearly. I have written the same that when it was passed and when it came into course, how many parts, sections, and chapters are there, and then I have written some of the important, you know, articles from this uh, law. So if you, mem if you memorize that when this law was passed and uh, if this law came into course and uh, how many chapters, articles, are there, uh, I am sure that you will be able to get uh, at, at least 5 to 10 marks because in, in all the exams uh, they, they must ask that how many, how many articles are there in Kandamish Hadat, how many articles are there in civil procedure. So, so you, you must memorize, you have to memorize all these things. things. And uh, this, this is, this, these, these are, are my one page notes for myself. You can uh, expand them, you can, you can just write on one page how many articles are there how many sections are there when it was passed and uh, you can keep it in your pocket to memorize it if you want to do this in one day so you, you can make these types of notes i have shown you this these notes which are related to uh, which i made for myself to memorize how many sections and articles and the parts are in one specific law and some of the important articles and uh, when it was passed and when it came into force. So these are the questions which are must. They will definitely come in your uh, seal or log at exam. So you can make uh, uh, these types of notes. Okay. So uh, the first step was that I started reading from the BRX. Secondly, I started uh, making uh, notes. And uh, thirdly, what I did, I uh, watched videos available on YouTube. Fortunately, this is something on which you can rely. There are a number of uh, good channels. There are a number of uh, good uh, Pakistan law professors who explain the Pakistani law, especially the procedural law, uh, on their YouTube channels. There are a number of good channels available. I will not recommend um, or I will not specify a specific uh, person or channel, but uh, you can find a number of, uh, you know, people uh, explaining in about um, uh, civil procedure or criminal procedure. Civil procedure is, is quite difficult. Uh, and uh, criminal procedure is uh, is uh, not very difficult. I mean, both both of them they are not difficult, but you just have to develop the taste of uh, reading this Pakistani uh, law or the BRX. So you can you can start watching videos. There are even videos available. Uh, uh, the summarized versions of civil procedure and criminal procedure, where these lecturers have explained civil procedure and criminal procedure in a single lecture. Similarly, you can find, uh, you know, the lectures related to Karun-e Shahadat and specific relief and uh, Constitution of Pakistan. So, uh, after taking notes, I watched videos. Uh, and uh, while watching the video, if you don't understand uh, 
something i mean he refers to a specific article and you don't realize uh, the context of uh, this article you can simply go to your published material and you can just open the book and look at that article you can pause the video and look at that article so this is how i was uh, preparing uh, then uh, if, if if i talk about uh, my mistakes what what uh, i i realized at a later stage that what i was not doing well uh, i would say that the first mistake which i did was uh, not to consult with uh, a local law graduate who could better you know guide me that what to read what to focus on and uh, what to leave because i was reading from A to Z and uh, I was thinking that uh, everything is important from the examination perspective but uh, at a very later stage I realized that not everything what was mentioned in these books were or in bare acts was important. I mean uh, uh, when it comes to the articles and sections of uh, civil and criminal procedures uh, definitely they are very important but a local law graduate can better guide you that which articles are are you know very important from practical point of view so for example uh, which articles talk about uh, fir or um, if you have to you know if, if we talk about uh, Kanune Shahadat, what is a stopal, or uh, how to take, uh, how to decide the legitimacy of the child. So these are some of the things which local law graduates they they have on their fingertips, and they can guide you better. Uh, but uh, I still recommend that you have to do the thorough study because you need. Uh, not only you don't need a license but you need the knowledge as well so first start from thorough study and then go to the narrow study and at this stage you can consult with some of the local law graduates or practicing lawyers that which articles or provisions are important from practical point of view and you can take notes of these then uh the final step was in my preparation i uh, found you know many notes uh, for law grad for law grad uh, cat program uh, they were available uh, online and uh, on facebook uh, many students were sharing these the law gets uh, notes in in these groups in whatsapp groups or on facebook facebook groups so you can just uh, simply contact uh, uh, these people who are sharing these materials. You can simply type uh, log at uh, exam in, in Google search and you will find a number of groups. And if you will join any of these groups there, there you can find different people who are sharing materials or notes related to log at program. So I found uh, material, multiple choice questions, mostly from these groups. I downloaded them and then i started uh, reading those uh, multiple choice questions from uh, those notes which i downloaded from internet uh, i still have some of uh, these notes available uh, if any of one of you in, is interested you can just uh, contact me by email or by you know typing in comments or i will uh, you know share uh, my email address uh, in the description of this video you can contact me and i will try to you know send you this these notes by email so final step for me was to prepare these multiple choice questions which i downloaded again from different whatsapp and facebook groups uh, which are made by our local law graduates who are preparing for law cat i have even found uh, two important books one of them was published by the dogger publisher another was uh, uh, an old book i don't remember the publisher but it was according to the previous syllabus of log at they were very helpful you can again go to the 
law book store there are number of books now available uh, related to law that you can buy any of these books and you can you can read uh, those mcqs uh, on the exam day i discussed uh, this question that how other students other foreign law graduates prepared their c law exam and i found that most of them they prepared the c law exam from law get materials and most of them they relied only on these uh, uh, books these books of multiple choice questions available for law get students i will strongly discourage you to adopt this uh, strategy because uh, this is not going to help you in exam and in the long run in your practice in pakistan you know by nature we like compulsion i mean this is the only opportunity when you can study these pair acts from the beginning till end and uh, you are motivated enough to pass your exam i am sure that once you will pass your exam you will not even look at these pair acts so uh, i will recommend that you should start from reading pair acts and don't go for these multiple choice questions notes or books which are available for law get students to prepare your c law exam uh, this is something which you should do at the end so let me repeat once again my uh, you know steps in which i prepared the c law exam the first step for me was that i downloaded uh, the pair acts i printed them i read them i took notes i identified uh, important provisions articles and then i watched uh, videos available on youtube and finally i prepared uh, multiple choice questions so this is how i prepared my c law exam uh, another thing related to the constitution of pakistan this was my one of the biggest mistakes i would say uh in the beginning i thought that i just need to prepare the constitution of pakistan uh constitution of pakistan of 1973 and i was just focused on these 280 articles of constitution of pakistan of 1973 but uh, later i realized that constitution of pakistan is not only this single constitution but there are other previous constitutions old constitutions and then you have to study the constitutional history of pakistan which is from uh, the uh, which starts from uh, the independence then who was the first president who was the first prime minister who was the first chief justice uh, how this uh, law came into existence what is the uh, objective revolution uh, and then uh, i mean uh, the constitution 1956 uh, who passed this 1962 and then 1973 and finally the amendments 24 25 amendments into the constitution of 1973 so the amendments are also very important because there were a couple of questions related to the uh, amendments in constitution so when so when you prepare the constitution of pakistan don't rely only on one constitution the constitution of 1973 but you have to uh, read about the amendments in the constitutions and also you have to read about uh, the constitutional history so Uh, this is how i prepared constitution the easiest uh, portion of the sila exam which i found it was uh, kanun e shahadat the law of evidence very easy to read and very easy to memorize uh, the specific relief act is uh, it's a little bit confusing for many many people but if uh, you realize if you if you realize that uh, in the beginning of the specific relief act there is a list of all the available reliefs so you can just memorize all of these available 
release if i can find some of my printed notes i can i can uh, you know show you so these are some of some of the notes you can find these these are the notes uh, for example, it is about Kanun Shahad. I downloaded it for, from internet. These are just two pages. Someone, uh, some, someone from Pakistan has uh, written these types of summarized notes in which they have written, uh, you know, they have tried to give you a sketch of what is in a specific law. So you can find these types of notes as well. And then these are these are some of the MCQs which I downloaded. I I did these MCQs again and again. And uh, yes, this is this is from the Constitution. So from the Constitution of Pakistan, I printed only the the part uh, seven which is related to the courts. The chapter one is related to the courts, and the, and the part seven is the uh, judicature, and I think this is the final part of the constitution. So I printed only this because it uh, talks about uh, how judges are appointed, uh, how the judges of uh, high courts are appointed, how the judges of Supreme courts are appointed, and uh, who can appoint the judge, judge who can, uh, how he will take the oath what are the qualifications to be the judge of the high court supreme court and then the islamic sharia council and so on so, so, so i think that this part seven is very important from exam point of view then you can find many notes such as these this is constitution of pakistan so some of my friends from the local llb program they have made these types of notes in which they have written uh, you know important articles of uh, constitution you can you can just simply download them and you can read them and uh, yes this is this is the specific relief act the bear act you can download this and if you will start reading part by part you will try to contextualize the thing in the you will you will try to make a sketch in your own mind and uh, if you read the, this specific relief act chapter by chapter you can find the list of reliefs available so you don't uh, need to you know memorize everything what is written in specific relief act. you can just memorize the chapter numbers these chapter numbers in specific relief act these are actually the relief available uh, under this act so i think this this is more than enough and uh, this this is my printed copy of uh, the kanun e shahadat and you can you can take there you can you can see that i have taken notes Yes. Then MCQs related to Kanun Shahadat. You can do it again and again. You can even find some some handwritten notes. For example, this this is just a single page, double sided. Uh, the notes related to Kanun Shahadat. So the 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 person who has prepared these notes. He has just uh, explained article by article because all of these these acts no matter it is a civil procedure or criminal procedure they are very systematic in nature i mean uh, if we talk about uh, the civil procedure uh, how to file a suit how this suit will go into the court how uh, you know the parties will argue how you will bring witnesses how the judge will decide how the decree will come how you will implement so uh, similarly in uh, criminal procedure how uh, you know what is the crime how uh, a criminal with, will be arrested how what are the different types of uh, you know crimes what are the powers of judges uh, then you are in police custody then you are in court then the witnesses will come lawyers will argue the judge will give his verdict 
and then you will go go for uh, you know punishment so all of these laws they are very systematic uh, when you will start reading uh, act uh, in the beginning of the act the parts and the chapters and the sections are given so just look in, into those uh, parts and articles and sections and you will you will get an idea what is in this book and how the things will flow so summarizing everything it is uh, not a very difficult exam in the beginning it was very difficult for me because uh, i studied in kyrgyzstan i did my llb from kyrgyzstan which is a civil law country as you know that uh, pakistan is a common law country we follow the british common law system which is uh, anglo-saxon law but i studied uh, civil law which is uh, roman 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 german law and uh, it was difficult for me to understand uh, many things but uh, the university of london's external program uh, graduates they are at advantageous position because uh, they study the common law uh, my llm was from xinhua university china i specialized in chinese law which is also civil law not related to the anglo-saxon common law or british law so for me uh, everything was new but i passed my c law exam with uh, 65 marks and i spent uh, i think one and a half month in preparing so this is this is to motivate you that if i a person like me who have no background in common law can pass this exam by preparing uh, these acts in one one and a half month those of you who have graduated from uh, university of london's external program it will be very easy for you to pass. Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Amar Yunifons again. Uh, this is the continuation of the previous video you can find on YouTube. Uh, how I passed my PLA exam. Uh, actually when I was recording, uh, I put in record the audio of this part. Uh, in which I was uh, going to tell you that, uh, what happened on the exam day. So, uh, my center was the uh, University of Health Sciences and uh, I originally belonged to Hamzabad. So, uh, the exam had to start at 10.30. I reached there uh, approximately at 10 o'clock. So, then uh, we started waiting outside and then uh, the action staff they called us. Uh, we sat on our chairs. There were other golden men and uh, chairs. Uh, different students were uh, sitting at a distance because of uh, the social distinction. So around uh, 10, 10 uh, 50, they distributed the uh, the answer sheets. So the answer sheets mean uh, where you have to mark your correct answers. And uh, this answer sheet has uh, two papers. The first page is uh, the original page is uh, the individual is left and the second page is the uh, carbon copy. Uh, I can show you the carbon copy. So, so, so this is the this is the roll number sheet which you will get uh, uh, in your email after the registration and uh, four or five days before the examination and this is the carbon copy so another another page is attached to this copy uh, you mark you mark your answers and uh, they automatically uh, imprint on this page and at the end of the exam you can take this uh, with you and after three or four days the HC will upload the, the correct answer keys you can then tell your right answers and you can you can uh, uh, calculate your final mark so this is how i do it. so when we sat on our chairs uh, just uh, five or ten minutes before 11 o'clock they distributed the answer sheets and uh, 
just five minutes before they distributed the, the question book. So this question book was in different colors. So different students were getting different colors of question book. I realized at a later stage when they uploaded this answer key, there was the same answer key for everyone, which means that just the just the color of the booklet was different and the pattern and the questions were same. So this time uh, the HEC they actually gave the same same question book to everyone and just just change the uh, you know the color of the the the, the, the front page. So every student will, so theoretically speaking, every student will get a different question book and uh, exactly two or three minutes before then the educators will tell you to open your question book and see if there are any, any misprints or any pages are missing. So you have a chance to look if your uh, pages are missing or uh, is there any misprint in your question book. And at 11 o'clock, they will ask you to start, and you can just start, uh, you know, writing your correct answer. You can you can read the question book, and then you can, uh, you know, fill these these bubbles on your on your answer book. What I did in my exam, I quickly went uh, through the whole paper question book, and uh, then I started attempting the questions. I just uh, did only those questions about which I was 100% sure. So I I would read a line and if I realize that I know this, I will fill the bubble. If I think that it will take me some time to attempt this question, I will move to the next question. And after completing the 100 questions, I came back and I, I started calculating the bubbles which I filled to know that how many questions uh, I have already attempted because these are the questions which I am sure that uh, they are correct answers. So I realized that 55 questions are those questions about which I am confident that they are going to be uh, correct. So after that, I started reading from the beginning once again, and then I started spending some time, stamina, and energy in. Uh, recalling and uh, contextualizing and uh, you know uh, putting the some, sometimes you have to compare one MCQs with the previous MCQ because uh, usually they they are in context uh, so this this takes some time but it helps a lot so and I realized that when I gave a second read I knew many more uh, MCQs but uh, they needed some time to think about them. So after completing that, uh, like in 45 minutes, I was I was done with everything. And I was just waiting that when they will ask us to leave. So uh, after 15 minutes, when the one hour passed, they ask us if someone has completed its exam, he can leave. So I gave my answer sheet back and I left. So how was the question book the question book was divided into five portions i mean it was written on the question book that the heading was uh, constitution law and then there were questions related to constitution law the first was constitution law then the civil procedure criminal procedure uh then specific relief so it was mentioned that constitution law and then there were 20 questions related to constitution law then the civil procedure and the question related to civil procedure and the criminal procedure and the question related to criminal procedure and so on so you don't need to worry that uh, you will mix the criminal procedure with civil procedure because uh, sometimes there are many identical things which has uh, different uh, which might have different answers in in the context of civil procedure and the criminal procedure so you don't need to worry because there will be heading that these questions starting from this point are related to civil procedure and starting from this point they are related to criminal procedure so the i think this is this is all about the c law exam don't worry at all just uh, start reading today from the bare acts and um, with the passage of time uh, you will gain your confidence and keep me posted about your progress and do tell me if my tips tricks have helped you in passing your exam if you are interested to discuss about a particular uh, issue which i was unable to mention in this video 
do let me know you can also contact me through email facebook or or any other social media platform i am available everywhere uh, you can even just uh, google my name um, by typing amar yunus and you can find me so if you need any suggestion recommendation consultation do let me know and keep me posted about your progress because the legal world is very small in a, in any case we are we are going to meet with each other our path will definitely cross someday i wish you best of luck for your CLA exam take care and goodbye